Over here on the left side of the bus you'll see these hills now they are actually what's known as the anti-taurus mountain range um, and on the top of one of those is Gebekli Tepe what's that? you'll see signs now for Gebekli Tepe if you want to get pictures of those as we go up the first one is here just uh, spotted Klaus Schmidt actually so um, he's the main archaeologist here who started excavating about 15 to 15 or so years ago and uh, let's see what we find. So Klaus is right there on the side Ali. Is that? Klaus is right there. Now on the floor here as you come past to my left you'll see one of the sides of the U-shaped stone that marks the entrance into enclosed sea, which is over here behind me to the left. And there's a creature on the top of it, and I'll be testing you afterwards to find out exactly what it is. Um, I mean, Klaus Schmidt believes that it's um, a feline of some description, or a mammal, although obviously, you know, I'm open for any kind of interpretations of of what you think it might be. These two stones in the middle are the ones in the centre of that enclosure and in front of them there was, a, a, there was an axe and, and other stones um, which you can see here in the wall. That's, that's the outer edge of, of that enclosure here. <coughs> yeah, it goes all the way round here with those two stones in the middle. On one of those is a fox um, I'm not sure what's on the other one, but this, this fox theme is something that you find on all of them because as you go from enclosure A to enclosure B over here, B here is probably slightly older, maybe uh, you know towards closer to 9000 BC. This is enclosure C. Now, Enclosure C was constructed probably around 9000 BC um, and it was approached through the U-shaped stones that you saw with the, the lion at the, the, at the top of the head along a passageway which was probably covered, although we don't know, that takes you into an outer circle, like an outer wall, so that you walk between that and somehow access and there were stones within the outer wall of this passageway, this circular passageway, and then somehow you were taken into the central enclosure here, where you've got the two huge pillars, and these would originally have been something like about 16 and a half feet tall, um, but obviously they were damaged um, either uh, 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 in antiquity by people or, or by the weather, and um, these are what are left. The one closest to me here has been repaired. It was repaired a few years ago. German team came in and, and reconstructed it. The one obviously on the other side uh, has been covered over uh, to protect it from the elements and protect it from any kind of vandalism. Um, now this stone here, this box here is where the 3D one sculpture, you know the 3D one of the, the, the creature going down the front narrow one, that's there, unfortunately it's covered. And, and you can see the larger stones along the top which are part of the original wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I want you to, to, to notice that on the top of some of the stones in enclosure C, and for the engineers, the budding engineers amongst us, um, you'll see that there are marks. There are like cut marks in the top of, of one there, one there, one over there, one there, and over the back there. Now, 
the most obvious answer for what these represent are that they supported some kind of roof. Now, obviously, these stones are pretty stable, but they're packed in within the pedestals here, um, and those pedestals are not very deep at all. And when the stones would have been at full height, they would have been extremely vulnerable, um, which does strongly suggest that there was some kind of structure over it. Now, we're not necessarily talking about a roof that was permanent, but something that could be used, something that kept the, 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 the stones in place, you know, maybe even something like the wooden structure that you see behind you here. Right, everybody? Okay. Right, this is enclosure D. Um, in my opinion, it's, it's the oldest of the four here. Professor Klaus Schmidt believes that, that C is older, um, but on astronomical grounds, I think that this one, the alignment suggests that it's older, and it doesn't matter whether you see it to do with the south or the north you know, to do with Orion, Sirius or, or Cygnus, all of it would suggest the same thing. And that's the fact that that one is older than all of the rest. The, the suggested dates that are coming out via astronomy is around 9400 uh, BC, which conforms absolutely perfectly with the carbon, radiocarbon evidence that's come out from stuff that they've removed from the actual walls, which they believe was in situ from the time of construction. Um, obviously, nothing can be definite on that, but, they're, 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 but Professor Klaus Schmidt and his colleagues are pretty certain that, that this does define the actual foundation date. So we're talking about a period of roughly 9-4, but it could be either way, 100 or, or 150 years. Um, and now, um, obviously, these are the two huge central pillars. Um, each one is clearly anthropomorphic. You can see the, the arms against the sides. You can see the hands stretching round to the front narrow face. You can see the belts on them. You can see the glyphs, the H-glyphs, the U-glyph, the, the three-pronged glyph, um, and obviously the heads. Now, I'll send this to, to Graham and have a look at this. On the one on the left here, it's parallel. Mm -hmm. The one on the right is nodding down and it's yeah. most notable if you look from oh, there. Side, yeah. And that, to me, confirms what Professor Smith says, that these are statues. They are meant to represent anthromos, you know, human-like in appearance, whether they're ancestral spirits, the first gods, the founders of Gobekli Tepe, whatever, is a matter of debate, mm. but they are abstract statues. I think there's, um, no, there's no doubt that they're anthropomorphic. Yeah. What's interesting is that they, that they, they, said they clearly had the ability to craft um, uh, and sculpt at a high level human Absolutely. heads if they wanted to. We know yeah. that figure from the figure in the Urfa Museum, the figure that they found in, in Urfa, which Absolutely. is roughly the same yeah. period. Yeah. It was a fully formed human face, and we, yeah. we just need to look at the, the beauty of the animal sculptures here yeah. to realize Absolutely. that these sculptors were perfectly capable of carving, carving a fully formed human head had they wished to do so. So mm. this must be a choice on their part, yeah. uh, that, it, that it's um, symbolic in some sense. Absolutely. We could and, be and, talking and, about and some kind of head dress perhaps but but yeah. they clearly they clearly opted not to put the facial features on it which seems to give it some kind of um, otherworldly yeah feel to it yeah. in other words it was a matter of of personal visionary experience as yeah. to what was seen That's what right. face was placed upon it yeah. whatever whereas yeah. if it was yeah. you know let's say the ruler yeah, they would have tried yeah. to create yeah. some kind of idiosyncratic. Yeah. No, it's cl it's clearly a choice, and uh, yeah. it's just uh, I would say it's one of the one of the mysteries of Gobekli Tepe as to why they why they made that choice. But, Absolutely, but uh, it does it does add a rather kind of um, austere austere and uh, spooky element to the to the pillar forms, the, the pillar anthropom anthropomorphs. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so these pillars, it's believed, are. 5.5 meters in height, 18 and a half feet tall. Sure. And it could have, it could have been something similar to what they've got now. Of course. Yeah, yeah. But they're only in the ground. Back I know, I know. It beats me. I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, push it from the top, it'll fall over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you know, know, unless they buried it so up to its waist, but then they would lose all the detail that they'd taken such trouble to create. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah.
Well, that, that hole wasn't there when I was... That's one of the... Mm. On the basalt, um, like offering bowl things they found yeah. here. That wasn't uh, here last year. Girlie's in, <laughs> looking good. You knew what the bigger ones looked like. That is a, they consider to be a beer barrel, by the way. Respect. So I've had an amazing time here at Gebekli Tepe. What amazes me most is the fact that it's said to be 14,000 years old now, not just 12,000 years, as what uh, Klaus Schmidt originally thought. Um, so this this really kind of gets me and uh, there's more more being discovered He says there could be up to 50 enclosures here not 30 as originally thought So this is a vast temple site upon this hilltop incredible in fact mm -hmm.